Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. Well, I've been spending some quality time in the Lake District recently. Let's face it, when you're in the Lake District, what other time is there? One particular walk took me up to Glencoyne Head, where we had all varieties of weather squeezed into the course of one day. Well, Glencoyne itself isn't a lot to look at. It's a broad, rather featureless U-shaped valley probably glacial in origin, but the views down towards Allswater from the head of the valley were quite spectacular. Here then is a brief collection of highlights from the walk, starting out with the magnificent Aero Force and featuring some amazing views across the fells once the worst of the rainstorms we encountered had passed over us. Well, there's also a glimpse of a painting I've done looking down the valley from Glencoyne Head, which presented a few interesting compositional challenges for me. I'll be touching on a few of those challenges and showing you how I like to create the effects of low clouds clinging to the sides of hills and then rising as they evaporate in the heat. This was very much classic lakes with a bunch of steaming fells thrown in for good measure. I have to say, it was one of the best days walking we've had for quite some time. This is Aero Force All's Water. It's been in the hands of the National Trust since 1906 and is a must for any visitor to the area. Wordsworth waxed lyrical about it and with good reason. Its 72 foot drop is nothing short of impressive, particularly after a spell of heavy rain. Well, this was our starting point for a walk up to Glencoyne Head and back a round trip of just over seven miles, give or take. It was swelteringly hot, and that water looked rather inviting. Maybe another time. I always love to drop in on air of force when we're passing. Today, though, I had another objective in my sights. That's all's water you can see, with the fells above Patterdale and Kirkstone Pass beyond. I love this stretch of the walk. It's relatively easy going and the views are simply stunning. I also love to see the foxgloves, of which they were in abundance. A splash of colour in amongst all the greenery, really quite beautiful. It was hot, swelteringly so in fact, and up to this point it had also been dry, although that was about to change. The thing is, in these parts you can see the weather approaching long before it gets to you, so there's always time to get your waterproofs on and prepare yourself for the deluge. No 
one likes being caught in a shower, particularly out in the open with no shelter. But when you're rewarded with the sight of steaming fells once the rain has passed on, I don't really mind at all. In fact, this rather felt like a bonus. And this finally is the craggy head of the valley, Glencoin Head. Well, there are a few little springs here and there feeding Glencoin Beck and some rather lovely rocks. I love rocks, me. There were a few Herdwick sheep knocking about too, not to mention some angry looking clouds creeping over from the south, threatening more rain. It was all worth it though, and before heading down Bleebank's side, back towards Air of Force, there was plenty of time to enjoy the stunning views back down towards Alls Water. Before I dive in and paint it, let's just pause for a moment and quickly analyse the composition. Because we're high up, it's worth noting that so is our eye level, way up there. The rocks in the foreground provide us with context and a visual starting point. They're also quite a bit lighter, which helps to provide some much needed contrast. The scene is split into roughly three sections, with the distant lake being far from centre stage, yet still managing to dominate the view. It's that middle section that's likely to be the most problematic though, with its general lack of features. There are some lovely undulations and variations in vegetation on the surface of the valley though, which I plan to use to create the illusion of space and depth. Or at least that's the plan.
Of course, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to include some of those glorious clouds of evaporating moisture clinging to the far fells. The easiest way to do this is to scrub the area with a wet brush and then lift it out with a piece of tissue. Well, because lifting out paint like that has a tendency to create hard edges, it's necessary to soften some of them off here and there by a combination of applying further paint and softening it off with a damp brush. Further careful lifting out with the tissue. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I think it's fair to say that the Lake District is always good value for money. With the likes of Helvellyn and Striding Edge nearby, Glencoin Head is easily overlooked. I would definitely say it's well worth the walk up from either Aeroforce or Glencoin Bridge car park. Well, if you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button. It'll help me to produce more of them and grow the channel. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, then welcome. Where have you been? It would be great to have you along as a subscriber. I should say, if you're interested in the longer uncut version of this video, which also features the full non-time-lapsed painting demonstration, then I'm pleased to say that it will be available along with a step-by-step -step guide to painting it yourself, should you wish. This and hundreds of other similar projects are available to all subscribers of my online tuition service, which starts at a mere £9 per month. Well, full details of how to subscribe to that can be found in the description below. Well, this was a good day on the hills. Until next time, take care.